Weekend Game Plan welcomes in La Presse Canadienne's Fred Degla in his well-rounded take on the Montreal sports scene. Silly Fred, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Matthew? I'm very well. We just uh, finished watching here in studio and listening on TSN 690 to that incredible, incredible tennis match. Yeah, I just woke up and saw the, the first tweets coming out from Melbourne, and uh, I said, wow, what a match did I miss. But uh, <laughs> I was uh, I went to bed at about the time that two, those two guys uh, got on the tennis oh, court. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much for getting up for us. Uh, had we known that you would be a little bit delayed here, I would have I told you last night so you can get an extra few minutes of sleep. So my apologies. <laughs> uh, right, still, uh, I still have to, to do the, the survey of all that has been written on the boxing match yesterday. Yes. Uh, so you were down at the Bell Center for La Presse Canadienne covering uh, the, uh, the festivities there. How was that well that was that was quite a night that ended horribly um cook oh, horribly not because of the result i mean cook uh knocked out cold uh stephen butler at the very end of the seventh round and butler got up uh, before the 10 count but he was still wobbling on his legs and uh, referee marlon b right took the right decision by stopping this fight but then um Everything went hellish in the Bell Center. Uh, bottles were thrown on the ring. Brendan Cook was hit by a, a nice bucket, of all things, right in the face. Uh, there were people injured. Um, Francis Park came from RDS.ca, who was sitting right beside me. He got hit by a, uh, a glass bottle of some sort. So we decided that uh, uh, we'd be working from behind the scenes, and we left the premises right away. Um, it was, I mean, this is, this is one, uh, this is the first time I, I'm, I witnessed something like that. And it was, it was horrendous. I mean, you go watch a boxing match, your guy won't win it a hundred percent of the time. Otherwise, why bother? So it was, um, disgraceful. It was tasteless. It was, um, shameful. I was, I was ashamed of the Montreal crowd yesterday. Fred Degla joining us here on Weekend Game Plan with Matthew Ross. We're here till 9 o'clock. Uh, Fred of La Presse Canadienne down at the Bell Centre last night for what turned out to be a, uh, a very uh, tough scene after the match. So, uh, Fred, were, were the police called in? Uh, were, were there uh, yeah. fans arrested? Talk to me about that part. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the numbers, but um, uh, from what I read uh, this morning, because yesterday evening, well, yes, well, t- last night, it was it was a bit tough to get some uh, uh, numbers. Apparently, uh, a few people got arrested. Uh, four or five uh, got treated for injuries. Um, one of them seemed uh, uh, to be worse than others. Uh, a woman badly cut on the head by a bottle. Um, people were uh, police was very quick to respond. There were two security teams yesterday uh, at the Bell Center. The Bell Center security guys and the uh, Garda security hired by Eye of the Tiger management for their events. Um, both these security teams were quick on the scenes, and somebody called the police scene uh, very quickly because uh, there were about 50 uh, police officers rushing to the ringside minutes from the, the, the start of the uh, um of the riots, uh, it, it looked like a riot. I mean, it's it's, it's not a. At first, I thought, well, these guys are going to come down on the ring and and you know make sure Brendan Cook doesn't leave. So the, they had they had the great idea, of the Garda security and the Bell Center security, to get Cook out of there as soon as possible to bring him back to his locker room. Uh, but then they, those security officers got involved in a fight with uh, Stephen Butler's fans who wanted to go, uh, you know, in, in Butler in, in uh, Brendan Cook's locker room. So it was um, it wasn't a, a very fun thing to be witnessing yesterday uh, last night. In terms of the boxing, uh, what was the uh, the best fight of the night? Uh, Cook Butler was good. I mean, these two guys. Um, Gave it to each other. Uh, Cook had it uh, at the over end, uh, uh, the upper end in this, but uh, he still had to, uh, to, uh, you know, to to live with a, a couple of tough shots from Stephen Butler, who, um, after six rounds, was leading on every judge's card, 58-56. I had the I had the boxing match at 57 everywhere on my on my end, but I'm not an official judge in this, obviously. So, but. He, he got 
he got really lucky to go through the sixth round. And then in the seventh, he, he went back and was more precise with the jab and was keeping Cook at a distance. But it seems to me that he, he forgot the round lasted three minutes and he boxed for two minutes and 45. And then Brendan Cook just jumped on him at the end of the round. And that was it for Butler. Um, on the undercard, we had a couple of good fights. Uh, Simon King got a very tough opponent in a uh, heavyweight from California, Avery Gibson. Keane had fought uh, only once uh, till the fifth round. All of his other fights ended in the first or second round. And uh, he got there for eight rounds against Avery Gibson. He gave him everything he got, but the other guy just wouldn't fall. And uh, um, that was a, a good uh, a good uh, lesson for uh, uh, Simon King, who, who I think needed the, the round. Um, Evilis Jr., uh, who was... Even though he won his last fight uh, in May or June, and he had a, a, a concussion after that fight, and it was a, that was his first fight yesterday, and he seemed uh, rusty a bit in the first round, but uh, came out uh, winning in 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 quite uh, in a, quite a style fight. Um, we have, a, as usual, I have the Tiger. Every boxer get a, gets a good match on the card, and um, it was uh, it was. It was still true yesterday. Fred Degla of the Presse Canadienne joining us here on Weekend Game Plan with Matthew Ross. You can check out Fred's uh, coverage online. And uh, Fred, uh, let's switch gears, talk a little CFL here. You cover the CFL and pretty much everything for La Presse Canadienne. We're going to have Deron Carter on the show next hour, which should be very interesting. But I uh, wanted to get your take on the Argonauts um, shuffling with the coach and then obviously the GM, uh, the you know, president, uh, Barker, getting fired. What's your take there? Well, um, many people see uh, Barker's firing as uh, uh, the, the – uh, the new entryway for Jim Pop to get back into the CFL, and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, um, is there a, a more experienced uh, GM uh, available for a CFL team? I doubt it. Um, but I was I was a bit surprised to see Milanovic leaving yesterday. I, and I mean, you can't um, you can't keep a guy from uh, from moving forward. And uh, I guess that a QB coaching uh, uh, job in the in the NFL is is one one good way to get his feet in the in, uh, in the door and uh, get his foot in the door and uh, and move on the ladder afterward. But now the the GM the the the, uh, the Argonauts are are without leadership and and free agency is in what three weeks two weeks yeah uh, so they they need to to get uh, they need to get moving on that front quickly and find the right people because. This team was not a very fun sight to see last year, and uh, I doubt that uh, uh, rushing to find a new leadership uh, will help them for the upcoming season. Fred Degla of the Presse Canadienne joining us here on the program. Indeed, free agency begins, I believe, February 14th for... Something uh, like that, yeah, 14th for, or 15th, and I, I, I have to check, but yeah. Right for this, so it is very soon, and they're, they're, they're kind of... Without a rudder right now, that's for sure. Um, as for uh, the Alouettes, Fred, uh, we saw some coverage this week about the new assistant uh, GM uh, taking over for Joey Abrams with the Alouettes, uh, uh, breaking ground, of course, as a as a female in a male dominated uh, business. Uh, do you know uh, anything uh, on this front, and what was your opinion of that? Well, I don't know, Captain Reich. Uh... At all. I mean, I, I saw her in the first of all Molson Stadium a, a few times and at the training sessions and all that. I don't, I don't know her at all. The thing is, it's a great thing though that the Alouettes are breaking ground like that um, and and putting down the gender barrier. Um, this is, this is. I mean, everything is positive in, in this uh, in this announcement. Uh, I will get to meet with uh, Captain Raisha in the upcoming weeks. Uh, I have something uh, to settle with her. I have a, a long sit down and learn more about her and uh, mm. uh, kind of learn what she wants to do with the, with this uh, new job. Um, her resume is quite impressive. Uh, let's, and, and I don't doubt that she was a, a valuable asset for a contract negotiation and cap management if she got the assistant GM job. But I, I'm really looking forward to uh, to know more about her and, and 
and see where this experience goes. Uh, is it is it the Atlanta Falcons that that have a uh, an assistant coach, a female assistant coach on the staff? Uh, there's one team in the NFL who hired, a, and a, I think she's a linebacker coach or something. And I mean, you see that, and and it's. I think it's just great news that you see more and more of those announcements and hirings. Yeah, it's uh, the Buffalo Bills. Catherine Buffalo Smith, Bills. Uh, the yeah, first awesome. female NFL uh, head coach. Yeah, just uh, wrapping up with Fred Degler from the Presse Canadienne. At Fred Degler, if you want to follow him on Twitter, always a great follow because he's always covering everything. Fred, merci beaucoup. I hope uh, Les Enfants let you sleep a little bit this morning. Thank you so much for getting up. Well, Re- really appreciate you know, it. You know the drill. Don't count on that. I'm already uh, waited upstairs to uh, cooking something. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys.